Hi everybody, this is Linda with Overbird Quilt Connection. We are doing month eight, or block eight, of the Illusion Sampler. And uh, this month, this block has quite a bit of paper piecing. We've done paper piecing in a previous block, and when we start out, it's very similar because we're just doing um, a center with two sides. But we get a little more complex when we get into the centers. And on those, when I copied those out of the pattern, I copied those in color just because you know, you've got to get the, the colors in the right order in order for the design to come out right on the block. So if you have the ability to copy those in color, it would be great. Because, well, here's a for instance. Here the blue has to be on this side, here the blue has to be on this side. So just to make it easier on yourself, if you can col copy them in color, do that. This one, the only color that you're dealing with is the the one that's going to be in the center, so it wasn't as important. But we're going to be making units that look like this when they're done. Um, now, the pieces that they've had you cut are oversized, so you don't really, you're not really going to run too much of a risk in not having enough fabric to cover the whole piece. But still, you want to be, I mean, good paper piecing technique means that you will want to kind of be careful where you're lining things up. So I'm gonna kind of go over that again. Um, when you print your, your patterns, you're gonna to wanna to fold, and I fold in both directions and crease them on all of your stitching lines. And that included um, these that had a lot of stitching lines. Whoops, let me get back to one of those that had a lot of stitching lines, I creased every single one of these and I creased these all the way out to the edge even though you're not gonna stitch all the way out, you're just gonna stitch part way. I still creased it all the way because eventually I'm gonna be cutting that off so it's good to have that um, already creased for when you do that. Okay, so the first thing they have you do is they have you cut these um, background, these orange pieces that are actually bigger than the piece you're putting it on. And that allows you to square the unit up when you're done. So, and I put just a little bit of glue in the middle, see? I put just a little bit of glue right here to hold it where I wanted it. And then I took my background and you with paper piecing you kind of have to hold it up to the light which this isn't going to be a good example but um, I can kind of get good light through my sewing machine light or if I've got a window at home that I look things through but anyhow you want to be sure that you have a good quarter inch um, past the stitching line and you gotta make sure that you put it on the correct way. So when you fold it back, it actually covers covers the piece you're wanting to cover, not sewing it the other way and having it end up covering the, covering the center where you don't want it to be. So I make sure that in this case, so you're gonna be laying it on, you're, you're gonna be stitching on the paper side, of course. So, um, you want to be sure that your quarter inch seam allowance is at least a quarter inch seam allowance past that stitching line. So then I stitched along that and then I pressed it back and then you'll trim it off. And I don't know that I used it the last time, but I like this add a quarter plus ruler. Um, and the reason I like it is because it has this lip that is going to um, hook onto my paper. So to trim this off, I've stitched here. To trim it off, I fold it back on the fold, and then that ruler just sits on that, that fold of that paper, and then I can just slice it off. So... Um, then that's going to trim both of these off and then I'll 
press it back and then you'll only have the, the one layer again. So let me show you, sorry, I mixed up my, my stuff when I was showing it to you, when I was showing it to you before and now I have to dig for it. So then, so this is how it looks after I've trimmed it, okay? And I press it back. Then I do the same thing with this second side and again, I kind of audition to make sure that when I, when I have it folded back, um, that it's going to cover the whole the whole piece. Okay, so then once again, I make sure that my quarter inches are pretty, at least a quarter inch. Stitch on that second side and repeat the same steps. I'll fold this back, and this time then. When I fold it back, I'm also going to, because my seam allowances have crossed, I'm also going to fold that back so I have a full, so I'm not going to lose any of it and make sure that that my fabric is completely um, folded back, that I don't have any pleats there. And then once again, I'm going to put that ruler on. And if the piece you're doing is longer, it's really easy to slide that along that along that edge to continue cutting if you need to. If that's if you don't have one of those contact Amy and she'll hook you up <laughs> uh, but then you fold it back press it back and then we just square it up like you would any other it squares up to four and a half now one thing I did do though let me show you with a couple of different rulers here with the four and a half, I made sure that my diagonal intersected that, um, that point and that my diagonal hit the point out here. Um, and it's likely that your piece may have shrunk a little bit as you've done the stitching. So that's another reason they oversize it. But make sure that you're at four and a half and then trim off your two sides and then turn it around and trim it again. But again, both times I made sure that that 45 degree line um, went through where my stitching crossed here and then where the point was out here and then trimmed off the other two sides. So you will make four and here's your corner units that you end up with. You will make four of those that look like that. And at this point, I've left the paper on. Um, it's your choice whether you seam the stuff together with the paper on or off. It's your choice, whichever you're most comfortable with. Um, but you will make four of those. Okay. Oh, I wanted to show you the other ruler as well. If you have a fussy cut ruler, the four and a half inch fussy cut ruler does the same thing. You can line it up with the lines on the points and square it up exactly the same way. All right. Then the next thing they have us do is make a four patch unit. Woohoo! Hard stuff. Mm -hmm. Go through that again. So. Right? <laughs> I think you figured it out, but they instead of pinwheeling it, they have you press it to one side, and it says in the pattern which you know which way to press everything and which way to lay out your colors. And that's important because they're going to eventually um, be part of that star pattern. So it's important that you do them in the same order that they that they do it. Okay, then we are on to the next set of paper piecing. And that, again, are the ones that I suggested that you uh, make color colored. So we start with a big square of the yellow. And so I glued it on again, like, like the other, with just, just some um, an Elmer's glue stick that's washable or um, fabric, a fabric, um, there's several companies that make uh, water soluble fabric glue that you can just put a little dot on and just stick it down just so it doesn't shift and get twisted on you. 
Okay, then they have you start with a background square, and again, it's oversized, but you are going to have to kind of line it up with, um, so again, if you have the ability to hold it up to the light, you'll be able to tell when you are about a quarter inch or a little more um, past that and that your angle is correct. Um, you're going to stitch on this line, and I just stitched a couple of stitches back past it, just um, far enough to hook it so when your, your seam goes across it this way, you don't have a hole there. All right, then you press it back. Make you know again. Make sure you've covered that whole that whole side, the whole place that it's supposed to be. And then once again, we're going to cut that off. And again, you're going to fold that back, and you're folding it all the way down to the to the tip because you're going to go ahead and cut all of that. So again, see how I had a fold there? Make sure you don't have that. Make sure you have a straight, make sure it's flat. And then again, I'm gonna cut all of that off. So let me show you the next, the next one I've, I've got here. And so see how that is trimmed off, but you still have your paper. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do then is so the other side, which is number piece number three, of background one still and this time we are um, lining it up again you got to make sure that you're um, that you're not going to have a hole there that you have extended it far enough that you're covering um, covering that angle as you can see I didn't get that one necessarily all that straight but it is gonna cover that whole piece, so it's not a problem. So I stitched that down and then, again, fold it back, make sure it's covering everything that it's supposed to cover, and then flip it back. Again, make sure you have no pleats there. And this time, I'm gonna show you what I do. I tear out that little bit so I can get this flat to the stitching line, and I also flip that over just so I'm not cutting any of the paper off at this point. And then I would use my ruler and cut that off again. Okay, then we will be moving on to piece four and piece five. Now piece four, Depending on what color you're doing, piece four, in this case, is purple. So, um, again, you're lining it up the same way. You make sure you, and it's, it's a nice long piece, so you don't have to worry about it being too short. But again, make sure you're at least a quarter inch past your stitching line and that your fabric is lined up the correct way. Stitch down that line, press it back to make sure that it's going to cover everything and it does. It's lots bigger than needed but I'm glad they did it because then you don't have to take it out and re-sew as much. But then once again we're going to Fold that back, and it, whatever little stitches that you went past on this seam, you're just going to pull out. So, you, I mean, pull the paper off of it so you can get it folded all the way back. And then, once again, you're going to cut all that off. Okay, so that would be folded back there. And then next, we would be lining up piece five. So piece five, whoops, let me get right sides together. And let me make sure I'm going the correct direction. So this is how I would line this up. I would make sure that I am at least a quarter inch past and I am a little deep, so I'm gonna move it back just a tiny bit. And then this side, I'm going to make sure is again it's at least a quarter of an inch 
and then I kind of, this is kind of how I audition it. I fold it back on my fold because I have a fold there. I can fold it back on. And so now I can see, well, yeah, I can adjust that some. And so that's going to, that's going to be pretty good. And then I just kind of guess and see it's plenty. There's plenty there also when I fold it, when I kind of audition it back. So I, what I end up doing then is this, um, this piece when I, because again, you'll stitch on this side. And I just kind of stop here right as I go off the paper and then I stitch, I go ahead and stitch down to the end. Um, so this is what your unit, when you fold it back and see I've trimmed I trimmed everything on that side, so I still need to trim everything on this side. So once again, I would be folding that back so there's no creases and trimming it off, but I've already trimmed it on this one. So then we are, so this unit then is done. So once again, I'm squaring it up. Um, and this time I used a regular square and then once again I'm going to four and a half so two and a quarter is a half of four and a half so I made sure my two and a quarter is where those stitches cross and where these stitches cross and I know then that my diamond is going to be in the middle and then I square it up like any other four and a half okay let me finish sewing up these partial pieces that I have I will come back and show you how the block then fits together. One thing I wanted to show you on your squaring up for your um, for these units is that this um, the points do not come out down to the points. They're about a quarter of an inch, not really well, kind of a weird angle in your. Um, and one thing I do like about this fussy cut ruler is it has your seam lines and I'm doing this backwards so it's hard for me to tell if I'm lined up but um, it will show sorry I'm having a hard time getting it lined up but it'll show that um, the it shows where the seam lines come together so you can see that where you're trimming is going to come on to that and then up here and down here of course you have your your little tick marks that you can make sure you're centered on that. So I just wanted to show you that because I didn't before. All right, so I'm going to lay out this block. And we're using this layout. So um, it will have all the all of them have to be laid out in the correct order for the pattern to develop so we'll have a row that has both corners and the red and teal in the and then we have our four patch in the center and so it will hook up to those and then that kind of tells you all the other color, where all the other colors will be based on how they line up. And then our last two corners. Okay, so that's how our block will lay out. And I will sew them into rows, just like always. The, the book or the pattern will show you to press this towards the center and these towards the outside. And then sew your rows together just like any other block. So I will finish that, come back and show you the completed block. All right, here's our finished block. This will be 12 and a half inches at this point. Let me... Um, tell you there's match points where your four patch meets the center of your um, of your star point unit so just be careful about that and otherwise 
it goes together pretty easy. I took all my papers off before I sewed it together, but again, you can do whatever you want on that. All right, so then we have accent strips, and the first accent strip is super simple. It's just squares, and they have you use one of each color, and then you need 10 squares. So there's nine fabrics, so you'll need to do one more square of your choice, and they are two and a half inch squares, so no big deal. You make one four patch that you will keep separate because it's, you know, the it's the accent strip that's divided, so You'll do, um, so this will measure four and a half inches, and it, again, it tells you how to press it in the instructions. Then you'll make two strips. Um, this one is my top strip, and it's pressed um, away from the first piece, if you, I don't really know how to describe that, um, but just look at your pattern. And then the next strips, um, so this one starts with a, a color and ends with a background. This one starts with a background and ends with a color. So when you put the two strips together, they're, the seams are all gonna nest and that'll be one, one big long strip. Easy peasy. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is square in a square, which we have not done yet in this. Um, we have colored squares that you're going to put background um, smaller squares on and we have background large squares that you're going to put colored small squares on and you will have two and a half inch squares that you will sew into um, that you'll um, sew around all of these to end up you're wanting a unit that looks like that um, so the first thing you do is you draw diagonal lines on all of your on all of your squares. Okay, you're gonna sew right on the outside edge of the, your drawn line and outside going towards the outside corner. And you'll sew corner to corner diagonally and then you will press them um, out away from the center, okay? Now, when you do that, first you wanna press it back just with your fingers and make sure that the outside edge of the square meets the outside edge of your original square. If it sticks out too far, you need to sew it a little deeper. If it doesn't come all the way out, you need to sew it a little shallower. But the idea is that this unit will still be four and a half inches when we're done. So you'll, you'll press that back and then cut it off a quarter of an inch away from the seam line, like we did here. Okay, then you'll do the next, the next one as on the opposite corner. Um, so you will do that and you'll just line it up on the corner, just like that. And again, so right on the outside edge of that drawn line. And I've done, this is the opposite way, but I've done it um, with the color, big one and the, the co big colored square and the small background squares. Now, um, this, the pattern does not say this, but I found this to be helpful. Um, they have you press, they tell you to press all of your seams out away from the center. But what I found was the ones that had the colored square, I pressed towards the center. And the ones that had the background square, I pressed away from the center. And that way, when you're sewing them together, it helps distribute all of those seams coming in together because that's a lot of seams coming into one place, okay? So just, just in case it's helpful, that's what I did. But when, when I'm doing that, again, I'm checking it first to make sure that, that the edges match. But then when I press it, I'm actually pressing it the other way, like that. And your edges should still match there. Um, and again, I'm doing the first two opposite each other. And then once those are trimmed off and everything, then I will put the other two on 
And so, like so, so like so. <laughs> so like that. And then that will, um, that'll finish this unit. Um, let me finish that unit and then I will come back and show you the completed, well, you can actually see the completed string. We just have one more to sew to the end. Um, and then, so you have a total of six. So I've got, I guess I have two more to sew to the end. So let me go ahead and do that. Follow the pressing that's in the, the book, in, in the pattern. Show, um, and then um, I will, um, you can kind of see here um, that they nest together. I'm trying to figure out how to describe that. When I'm laying them on top of each other, these are going out and these are going in. And so this one that the seams are going in kind of fits inside this that is going out. So you can really feel it when you have it lined up. You can really feel that the seams are nested. And then when you sew it, you want to sew it to where you're right, where, right inside where those, or right outside towards the cut edge of where those seams cross. So then you don't cut off your points either. So um, let me finish this up. I will finish the whole block and come back and show you the finished block. All right, here's our finished block eight. Um, I did not really talk about squaring up your um, square in a square units, but you can do that. I mean, we, if you're careful, you should be pretty close, but you know, sometimes things get wonky. But square it up with your, with your uh, ruler, just like you would any, um, a four patch or a, you know, anything. Just, you know, make sure you're not outside your lines, but um, anyhow, this is our block. I also want to show you, I have the first six blocks put together. And so you can feel like you're really making progress if you want to pretty that. And then, of course, we already have two of the next row, row three done now with block eight. So one more block and we'll have the third row done. So we'll see you back here for block nine.